Good afternoon, everybody. Well, Fridays with Feldman is here on Tuesday. We were uh, we had a little technical difficulties and something in downloading on, into Facebook, and the sound got uh, I guess erased on the download. So I hope you all can hear me, and I hope this uh, works out this time. It's Tuesday. Uh, I told everybody we were passed over before Passover in our voices. But anyway, we're going to talk about scoliosis, and we're talking about something very specific today, um, which is the non-fusion surgery. So we all know that scoliosis is a curvature of the spine. Uh, it usually occurs for no reason. Sometimes it occurs for reasons. But today we're going to specifically talk about um, what's new in non-fusion surgery. So certainly, you know, there's, there's bracing that we can use, which is obviously non-surgical. There's exercises which we use, which is called shroth, which and special bracing. We use something called a wood chino brace. But that's all pre-surgical. What happens if you do need surgery? You fail a brace or your curve is getting worse. And that's when the curves reach degrees, right? It's an angle. So it starts out at zero degrees. That would be straight. And as it gets more 10, 20, 30, 40, and as it gets above 40, 50 degrees, even if you're to become an adult during that period of time, it probably will progress at least a few degrees per year after that time. And the reason for that is that gravity, I mean, just basically starts pushing your spine more and more curved. If you reach adulthood and it's 20 degrees, it probably won't progress with about an 85 to 90 percent certainty. So why would we use some type of non-fusion surgery, which, and we'll talk about fusion is in a minute and what non-fusion is, but if the brace is not tolerated or if it's cosmetically unhappy or we really want to keep the motion, we're going to talk about that. So what is a fusion? So fusion means we take the spine, which is a building blocks of, of, of vertebral bodies. They all move like a chain. And we actually, they're all, they're all twisted like a snake, like a corkscrew, and we untwist it, and we weld them together. And we weld together how many links we need to weld together. The more links we weld together, the more stiffness there is to the spine. As we come to the lower spine, called the lumbar spine, that becomes very important because that's where we all get our motion from. They're called motion segments, and we get our motion from the lumbar spine. So we'd like not to fuse them, not to weld them together if when we're treating this scoliosis. So we allow us to correct the surgery with rods and screws fusion, and that's a welding of together. So this welding of the spinal elements together, we use screws and rods to hold it together. It's an inevitable loss of motion. Different depends, and again, like different motion depends upon where we're fusing, thoracic or lumbar. So here's a, here's a, a curve, and you can see this is a, a curve that goes, starts here and comes all the way down. And, and again, you can see that you can fuse this together, right, this long curve of the spine with rods and screws. And there they are, they make the spine straight, but there is going to be some loss of motion, in particular on the bottom, as you reach the bottom. In the thoracic area, where there's ribs, even if we fuse, we don't lose much motion. But the answer, the question becomes that people want to know is, can we do this without losing motion? Can we treat this quite bad scoliosis Can we treat this quite bad scoliosis, which is a going to, in a uh, C-shaped curve here, and maybe a little bit of an S-shape? And basically, can we treat this without fusion? And the answer is we can. So scoliosis surgery without fusion, that's why we're here today. So there's three, there's three different types we're going to talk about. There's something called growing rods. And you may have heard something called Magic, which is a, made by Nuvasiv, a Tether, which is mostly made by Zimmer right now, and Apifix, which is made by Orthopediatrics. So these are the brand names of three different methodologies of, non, of treating scoliosis without fusing the spine. So why would we use one versus the other? Why would we use growing rods, Tether, or Apifix? And that's really what we have to talk about today to make as parents or the patients are choosing what they want, why they would choose one versus the other, versus a fusion, because fusion is still the gold standard. But if you're gonna choose not fusion, why would you do that? Okay, growing rods. That's used for patients who have more than four or five years of growth left, because it's really used as a temporizing measure to grow the spine before we weld it together. So we, and the reason why we don't wanna fuse it when they're very young, when a patient's very young, is because we can lose lung function. 
Um, so there's different types. There's magic, which is a, a, an internal device which we can externally lengthen, even while it's internal, with a little device that we put on the outside of the body. A vector, which is when the ribs are fused and we open them up. Or standard growing rods, which we have to go back in every six months and lengthen. So this is a young boy who, if we didn't expand his chest wall, then he would lose his lung function and, and pass away at a very young age. So you can see, his, uh, you can't see, but if I could show you, his ribs are fused together. So his ribs are fused together in these little, in these areas, in all of these different areas. And basically, we place a rod to, we, I, I opened up each of the ribs and spread the ribs with this expandable cage, which is an expandable vet. This is internal, and we expanded his lungs and expanded his chest wall in this fashion. Basically, the, if, the rods, if the rods, if the scoliosis is the main problem, the ribs aren't the main problem, then we can use this thing like magic rods, like in this case. You see a large scoliosis in a very young patient. You place screws above and below internally, and then these rods are magnetically controlled outside the body to lengthen. But eventually, this patient will likely be fused. Here's another one of my patients with arthrogryposis with a bad scoliosis who is even losing the ability to sit. And you can see that I use these growing rod systems to straighten the spine, allow him to sit and even stand because I can expand gradually as he grew. He was only four or five years old when he initially had this. And I don't have to go back to the operating room every six months. I can just use the magnet on the outside and he thinks he has super magnetic skills and he gets taller every time I do it. So that's why you use growing rods. What about a tether? This is really a very, uh, this is a very popular th device right now to use for scoliosis. And what it does is you go from the side, which is what to the front of the spine, or the surgeon does, either through the chest or through the abdomen, and basically plates a big rubber band internally. It's a big polymer, actually. It's a band, either double or single strand. And you can make it safe and good, but the problem is you're going, you are going through the chest. It really should be used when there is growth remaining, not when someone's an adult, although people are trying it when you're adults, but it doesn't make quite as much sense. Um, and the curve should be less than 60 degrees. And it does maintain motion, but it can fail. But you could still have a spinal fusion even if a tether fails. But it does leave scars on the side. Here's a double curve and a double tether. In between these screws is a, that polymer I was talking about, the band. And that corrects the curve and will hold it there and allow the spine hopefully to accommodate and that would be it. That would be the only treatment for this person for their scoliosis and they would maintain their motion being able to do everything they were able to before whether that's gymnastics or some type of other sport. Here's a patient that I used it on because they had bad hips and there's a big lumbar curve which is where I told you have most of your motion. So I did a double tether for this patient. And you can see two screws at each level attached by the polymer band, and I corrected the scoliosis. And she still has a motion, which she needed because she had bad hips and in her back, and so she maintained her motion. I thought that was a really good indication for a tether, but it is a scar on the side. And sometimes for a fusion, we mostly do a scar in the back. Scars on the side, sometimes the patients don't like quite as much because they can see it more, even if it's a smaller scar. Something exciting I think is exciting is Apifix. So Apifix is a device that does not fuse the spine. It's dynamic and it's used from relatively minor curves, again, below 60 degrees. But the patient doesn't have to be growing anymore. It can even be done in an adult with a relatively small curve that doesn't have much rigidity. And we just put in, this is an old picture of one, but we just put in, here's, I'll show you the curve in a second. Here's a curve and basically it's, it's flexible, that's me proving it's flexible. And you put two screws above, one screw below, and you see I got this down to about 18 degrees. Cosmetically, functionally, it's much better. And this was an adult, actually, 23-year-old, who I did this for. So you can use this on adults who don't like their curves, for young people who cannot wear bracing, they just can't tolerate it. And it works out very well. It's an operation that basically lasts about an hour and a half, one night in the hospital, the patient's back to doing almost everything they can. There are some restrictions according to the, uh, the uh, manufacturer, but we don't, use, we don't have that many restrictions for these patients. It's minimally invasive and it allows for motion in between these segments. So it's not really rigid in here. This is all mobile. So you don't lose motion. 
you're able to maintain uh, the spinal motion and correct the scoliosis. So that's sort of an exciting new thing that just got FDA approved in America, used before in Europe and in Canada. Uh, with some, and we'll see the results over time. But again, if this failed, we could do a fusion if this got bad. But right now I've done a few and they seem to be holding quite nicely and doing well. So I think that that really is a summation of what you can do. You can do growing rods for very young patients, a tether for a little older, but still growth remaining. And then the smaller curves can be treated with this apifix. Having said that, fusion is still a very good option to treat scoliosis, but this gives you an idea, at least when, you're, when either the parents of your child or the child, the adolescents, the adults, are thinking about how they can be treated. So fusionless surgery, uh, scoliosis surgery is a, is a conversation to have for sure, and it's an option, uh, but it's certainly not for everyone. So it's not a panacea. And I'm treating a number of patients who failed from other places. So I think that you have to be careful in choice for yourself, for your family member. But it is a really good option for the right patients. So uh, thanks for tuning in second time. Uh, this is the first Friday of the following Tuesday. I'm wishing you all a great holiday season for Easter and Passover. And hopefully we'll see you in April. Uh, I think we'll be discussing, hopefully having a conversation with my new partner, Dr. Matt Dobbs, about some of the new techniques he uses for clubfoot and some of, the, uh, some of our synergies as well in treating both arthrogryposis and cerebral palsy. So hopefully this helped in understanding fusionless scoliosis surgery and certainly happy to take any questions you have um, either uh, by my email address on, on my website um, or on Facebook. We'll certainly get to it. So um, everybody have a great Tuesday and... Uh, Wishing you all very well.